Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you so much, Becky. Just as an aside, Becky, my life is so much different from being in a world where I actually respected my the other people I was running against. <laughs> the world I'm in now. It's a it's a strange shift. Um, the I also just want to give a huge thank you to the host committee, and I'm, I'm going to say these in um, Teresa, Bruce, Ruth, and Scott Nelson. Where's Ruth? I saw you somewhere. Um, there you are, Ruth. Um, Peggy Nasty. Uh, thank you, Peggy. Uh, Sandy and Steve Martinich. Thank you, thank you. Um, and the, the incomparable Linda Watkins. Yeah. Um, and, and a part of what I want to thank on, on them for is that as as dire as, as these times are right now, it is unbelievably inspiring how many good people are standing up and how many more good people there are than people sitting down right now. We, I would be depressed if the country was saying, eh, Trump, whatever, you know, we'll move on. But there were more people at the Women's March than his inauguration, followed by the Science March, followed by all the effort that the Parkland kids put through followed by, by all the effort that's happening you know, around, around the country right now in all these races. Um, and you know, I'll, 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 I'll talk more about, about our race in a moment, but I was, I was with Sherry Bustos today, and I was saying, you know, one of the things that is um, going to be very strange for this incoming freshman class in Congress is that there is so much positive energy, we're probably gonna, th whichever one of us win, we're gonna think it's just easy to win. Because um, we've had we've had 2,700 people volunteer for the campaign, um, and, and about about a thousand of them are pretty regularly in the um, We've had over 75,000 people make contributions to the campaign. Now, to put that in perspective, when I talked to Ro Khanna, he said in his first race he had 3,000 people. He was really proud. And I was like, well, I hate to break this to you. <laughs> um, and and I'm not unique in that regard. And I'm not unique in standing up in this moment. There's a ton of people standing up. And I am, I'm, it, it makes me kind of optimistic that we got to work really hard to get there on, on election day. And as I was chatting with someone beforehand, the goal here is not to win. The goal is to win by massive margins. So do not quit until this is over, because that's the way you extinguish Trumpism, is not by small victories. Um, but the... If we continue the way we're going, we're going to look back at this period and say, you know what, our founders put together a pretty good set of documents and it worked and it contemplated that you could have a crazy person out there and the system actually protected itself. Now, if we don't win, it's going to be a different story. Um, but, but, um, but that's the optimism. So, a little bit about me. Um, I think I know some of you in this room, not all. So, I, am, I have spent my whole career trying to do something about climate change. I think it's the existential challenge we face. And moreover, um, facts and character. If you make decisions based on facts and you surround yourself with people of good character, good things will happen. And the, the facts that we're confronting me were number one, that climate change is scary and existential and we're darn close to being too late to deal, do something about it. Number two, um, that view is not shared by the majority of the population all the time. And number three, that CO2 is the only pollutant that saves you money to reduce. Because anytime you burn less fossil fuel, you buy less fossil fuel. There's a return on the investment question, but it saves you money. And so that led me to find some people of good character and set up a couple companies where we had a mission to profitably reduce greenhouse gas emissions with the idea being that <clears throat> if you're really proud of your tinfoil hat, if you think Charles Darwin was a flat earther and a Chinese hoax and whatever other nonsense you have, but you're greedy, I can work with you. And so we built about 80 projects, um, invested a couple hundred million dollars, would have still been doing that, um, but we got to a point where our, our, um, our equity investors wanted out, and so, you, and so you sell. But then all of a sudden found myself sitting there saying, okay, we've, we've done something of some, some degree of goodness. Um, every project we did lowered CO2 emissions, everyone was at least twice as efficient as the electric grid, and always did it from the context of the win-win.